Father Vincent Druding, and I'm filling in for our pastor, Father John Higgins, here for Catholic Peekskill. It's a great honor for us this day and a great privilege. It brings me great joy to have with us as our guest, Mrs. Immaculate Ilbikisa from Rwanda. Many know her story. In 1994, she survived the Rwandan genocide. And as most of her family were murdered, she survived living in a bathroom three foot by four foot with seven other women for a period of 91 days. She entered that bathroom 125 pounds and left 65 pounds. She survived, according to her own testimony, on the prayers of the Holy Rosary. And we ask her now to come to be with us today to talk more about our Blessed Mother. Many have heard and know the story of Left to Tell, her book, which is a New York Times bestseller. So today I want to focus on the apparition of Our Lady of Cabejo. She was privileged to grow up three hours away from a town called Cabejo in Africa, which is the only church-approved Marian apparition in Africa. And she herself desired very badly as a child to know and meet the Blessed Mother and have the Blessed Mother appear to her. And so when she appeared three hours away, as she was a young girl, she was anxious to know all of her messages. Since then, she has written a book on Our Lady of Cabejo, and she knows the visionaries as and interviewed them. And so this day on Catholic Peekskill, we wish to know more about this apparition of our Blessed Mother and the life of Immaculate. Immaculate, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. My, my great joy. I can tell you that my mother met you on a subway in New York City mm. after the Pope's Mass in 2008 at Yankee Stadium. And she happened to ride next to you on the subway. Mm. And at that moment she, when she came home, she told me, she, ah, I met Immaculate. I'm so happy and she was so pleased. Oh. Some years later, my mom died and she always one time made a funny statement. She says, you should pray for people at the gas stations because she was falling asleep one day when we were saying prayers. And you know how sometimes your yeah. subconscious has things come out. And when she, she was praying for people, and all of a sudden she said, and we pray for mom and for grandma and grandpa and for the people at the gas stations. And it came out. And I said, what did you say, mom? What did you say? She said, and I, what did I say? I don't know. What, what did I say? I said, you said we should pray for the people at the gas stations. And I always remember that, especially after she died. And then one day in New York City, I was at a gas station. <laughs> And it was there in a gas station on 20th Street near the FDR Drive that I met Immaculate. <laughs> and I, I really think my mom's intercession in heaven made this connection. So I'm so grateful. I want to give mom some honor in heaven for that day, meeting you at the gas station. And now we've been so blessed to have you here at Assumption Church in Peekskill. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. So and welcome. I remember in the train. Yes. <laughs> really? I do. Yeah. It was a short ride we met in the train. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know, I, I've been uh, so pleased when I heard that story. And then when I met you, I couldn't help but to think, okay, mom, I think you had something to do with this. Oh, so we so really welcome idea. you and thank you for coming. Thank you. I wish to begin, um, you've been privileged to grow up near Cabejo, Rwanda, mm -hmm. during the time of the apparition of Our Lady of Cabejo, which we know is the only approved apparition in Africa. And this would be like growing up in Lourdes during the time of the apparitions of Our Lady of Lourdes. And you have come to know the visionaries and interviewed them extensively. Cardinal Timothy Dolan, when I was once present, called you Our Lady's Troubadour. That is the singer of Our Lady. And I wish that you could share with us first the message of Our Lady of Cabello and what you have learned about Our Lady from the visionaries of the apparition. Oh, thank you again for having me. And it's such a joy to speak about Our Lady. It's like it's hard to find words and that are smart words <laughs> you have to put together what exactly her message is but if I can put it in one word what I learned from Kibeho was our lady is real and she really loves us yeah. like the love that you can feel as a mother love a newborn mm -hmm. you know when a father is trying to protect the child that's what I got more than anything from Kibeho and when I speak to the to the visionaries and I was present at many apparitions you just felt the mother who will say my children, I love you, I love you, I love you very much. Please don't forget the love I love you. And it was just like, it really feels real. Like, and it is real. And she will remind us that I am here, I am with you all the time. And sometimes she would call the visionaries nicknames mm -hmm. that they used to have when they were like five years old. <laughs> so she would change her ways and just like call them like a nickname. And the kids would laugh like, mother, you know that? You know the name my dad called me when I was five years old? Oh. 
And our daddy would smile, of course I am there, my child. I am always and I was always there. And many people used to tell the, the, the visionaries, they told them like, oh, you speak to a lady like she's your friend or she's like your mother. You have to stop, you know, she's a queen, you know, she's the mother of God. And two visionaries, uh, and Natalie, actually three of them who were in the same school, they all said in an interview, I, I read it from the investigators of the church, they said, but I don't think we're talking about the same lady because the lady I see, she's in the mood of a joke, of joking. Uh -huh. Yeah, she wants to kid. Uh -huh. She's like teasing you. She's really <laughs> like a mother who wants to poke you so you can smile. <laughs> And she said, I don't think we're talking about the same. And they said, you can see she's a queen. She's, oh, she, you, she comes, there is no place that is worth more than on your knees. You don't even know how you go. Like, you go down because it's too pure. Uh -huh. So they have that honor they have for her. But, and they say, it's not, it's not like something pulls you down. You, that's the most place you, you, you deserve to be. Uh -huh. So you come down because she's too pure. But then the way she talks to you, she really wants to elevate you, uh, like a mother who wants to hug you. Uh, so she plays with them. Mm. So what I got more than anything is that truly that she's a loving mother. Uh, and she wants the whole world to understand that she's real. She's in our bed. She's in our bedroom. She's in our kitchen. She's helping the priest to celebrate the masses. Uh, so that was a big thing for me, because after that, especially with what happened during the genocide, she became my mother. I cried too. I can't wait to be in a corner and just like, you know what happened? You can't believe what happened. Because I know she's there in every corner. So that's really, I think, have me safe today. Another thing I, I found was so big for her was everything's about Jesus. Mm. She asked to build the church. A basilica in Kibeho is all about the mass. It's about the Eucharist. Uh. She wants us to recognize, acknowledge the price Jesus paid for us. Because that helps us to be who we are. So she's, everything is about Jesus. She comes, it's so funny. So in Kibeho, the apparitions were longer than the usual apparitions, like where she appeared before, which is typical Rwandan. People visit each other for like four hours, <laughs> like a whole day. So when she came, she would spend like, spend like four hours. So it was always like first 15 to 20 minutes, is about kidding with the kids. Oh. How is the family? How was your mom? I saw the, I thank you for going to visit your dad. You know, like uh, some of them who had some, you know, like one was come from a divorced family. Oh. Like, thank you for going to see your dad. I know you're not happy for what happened, but thank you for going there. Oh. And she would say, I, I saw what you had with your friends. Like there was a misunderstanding. I love how you handled it. I mean, she would encourage them in a simple thing. Oh. Or she would say, oh, Yesterday you were happy. In the school, they gave you donuts, <laughs> literally. <laughs> so after personal little thing, she will start wearing the message like for three hours. Oh. My son died for you. He calls you to life, to salvation. My children honor him. She will say, if you know I'm appearing anywhere and there's a mass going, go to the mass. Don't come to the apparition. She will completely put Jesus first, and she really made me love him. He suffered so much. He went through all this for you, my children. Please acknowledge the sacrifice he made. Out of love, not out of duty. He loves you. Father God loves you so much. He gave me his only son. He gave me to you to be your mother so I can comfort you. Or it was just like a good conversation of a mother who is really trying to help the children. So the main message for me was love for a lady, just to know she's real. God is real and loves us, truly, truly. Like, in a way that like, you can think of your father loving you or somebody who is most loving in the world, you know? God is more than that. And to try to picture that. Jesus, we need to acknowledge what he has done to us. Because we acknowledge it, then we can take life. We can trust his words. We can ask him for help to put our word first. Another thing was to convert was really big for her. Change your heart. And if you are attached to things that are not good, change your heart. It feels like it's our daily life. Even for us, like people who say, we have accepted Jesus, we love our lady. I think our lady wanted us to, before you go to sleep, to think back. Is today, did I do good? Did I behave well? Mm -hmm. Did I do my best? Mm -hmm. So in that night, make another decision mm -hmm. to do better. Mm -hmm. 
So her conversion was not a one thing, one time thing. Mm -hmm. It felt like it's every day we have to decide very strongly, mm -hmm. let me convert again. Another thing was the power of the rosary. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. When we don't have words, like me who was through the genocide, and we don't have words to pray because our mind are, God knows, in anger, mm -hmm. and then our prayers come from a place that is not pure, the rosary fix things back. Okay. Yeah, and then to give us the life of Christ. This rosary of the seven sorrows. Could you explain a little bit about what is the rosary of the seven sorrows? So the rosary of the seven sorrows is, is a rosary like the other one, but this one has seven Hail Marys and seven sorrows of Our Lady. Okay. The prophecy of Simeon, the flight into Egypt, the loss of our Lord in the temple, Mary meeting Jesus on the way of the cross, those are the sorrows. And standing under the cross, receiving the dead body of our Lord, and leaving the, our Lord in a tomb, and she goes home. Mm -hmm. So they are the main seven sorrows of Our Lady. But when you look at it, it becomes the sorrows of our Lord. Mm -hmm. It's really not just of hers. Mm -hmm. It's all centered about her. Mm -hmm. Somebody one time told me, like, but what about when Joseph died? She mm -hmm. didn't suffer. Mm -hmm. So she really chose the sorrows to inspire us. She didn't say everything that suffered her. Okay. It's everything centered on Jesus. Okay. Also to remember how much we are worthy in his eyes. So the seven sorrows, they are painful, are painful events, but I always compare them to the moments like my mom and my dad when they didn't sleep when I was sick, when mm -hmm. my brother was sick. Mm -hmm. Those are the moments that reminds me, my mom really loved me. Mm -hmm. Look at what she did. Mm -hmm. So the same way, when you go through the sorrows, the best fruit that come out of it is to realize, I am loved. Mm -hmm. I matter this much. Mm -hmm. I need to take care of myself for them to love me. Mm -hmm. I mean, to even appreciate them. Mm -hmm. I need to be, to be strong in my work, in my behavior, in my, you know, to that people are proud of me, mm -hmm. who went through this for me. Mm -hmm. So our lady had promised, through the seven sorrows, she will change the most hardened heart. Mm -hmm. Because once you are touched by love, you can't help but love. And that what was the greatest commandment of all, to love one another, to love God above. So seven sorrows rosary, it teaches you to love God beyond. It teaches you to be soft at heart, to realize what love is, and to do the same for other people. Yeah. Could you comment on the connection between Mary's heart being immaculate but also sorrowful at the same time? I know. It, it, that breaks my heart to know that she's so immaculate. She has done nothing, which is so beautiful for many people who the enemy tried to convince them, you're so bad, you have done so bad, you cannot be, you can't have mercy. Mm -hmm. So people want to kill themselves more because it's too late for them anyway. Mm -hmm. And because, and if they suffer, they think, oh, that's a punishment, and then I don't have any, any way out because I have done so much bad. Mm -hmm. But our lady is immaculate, have done nothing. And yet, this soul comes to her mm -hmm. to love us. Because when you are pure, mm -hmm. I mean, in the little purity, sometimes we feel after baptism, after confession, mm -hmm. you feel when you are pure, that's when you love most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when you care most. Mm -hmm. But in this world, you can't love without suffering. Right. Yeah, Jesus went through it. That was a pure example. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody suffered. Mm -hmm. This is what our lady have told us in Kibeho. Don't see people dress nice and think, oh, they are better. Me, I'm suffering, but them, they are better. They suffer. Everyone suffers something mm -hmm. on this world. But our lady, to know that she suffered in such a purity, it is just like example, you feel like I want to hold her, I want to make sure that she doesn't suffer much because look at what she did for me, look, she's so pure, at least me, I deserve it, but what about her? So you just see a redemption in suffering. Right. And the Kibeho, she used to call it sal salvic, mm. yeah, like a salvation, coming from mm -hmm. salvation word, mm -hmm. salvic suffering. Mm. Yeah, where there is a suffering, we suffer for others, and we suffer in our body, in our soul, but to just offer it to God. Mm. Yeah, if not even because it is a punishment, or because it is something that, because we did this, or even because we're trying to learn something, because some people think like, oh, I'm trying to learn something, that's why I'm suffering. Not necessary. Mm -hmm. For reparation, mm -hmm. we are a family in this world. Mm -hmm. We hurt God so much, who made us and make us a family. 
My mom suffered for me. My dad suffered for me. And we need to suffer for the world, for others. Mm. And I feel the best way is to do it willingly. Mm. Willingly in fasting, willingly by doing holy works. She used to call it our procession, holy works. Mm. She used to call us to do a lot of procession as you did so beautifully. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I missed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it was so good. And, and, and just to do works to go to place where she appeared. Yeah. Mm. What does Our Lady ask of us personally for each baptized Catholic? What does she want from each one of us? She wants us to love Jesus, mm. to really know where we come from, to love God. Mm. We come from God. He made us for himself. He has a purpose for us. So when we distach ourselves from him, then we get lost. Yeah, nobody who is away from God ever feel good forever. In the moment, pleasure, but in the moment, then you get lost. Mm. So she really wants us to come back to Jesus. She used to say, no matter what happened, even through the genocide will happen, hold on to Jesus, do not let go Jesus, mm. do not let go Jesus. Mm. And it was always like that. And she would, of course, ask us, hold on to her as a mother. She would guide us to him. Mm. Hold on to the rosary, really big. That is, I mean, my, my rosary, now that I think about it, when my father gave it to me as the last gift he gave me, it feels like he was saying, when I'm not there, you know where to go. <laughs> this would be the way to God, to ask him what you want through this prayer. And I take it this way. I tell my kids, you go to school, something bother you, say Hail Mary and ask Our Lady to come to help before you come home to tell mom what happened. Mm -hmm. Because she's quicker. <laughs> <laughs> and hold on to your rosary, say it when you have a little time, mm -hmm. because um, Our Lady will send her angels. So Our Lady wants us to love Jesus so much. A and He deserved to be loved. He gave everything for us. She wants us to love one another so, so much. She wants us to care for the weak, the ones who are less fortunate. She wants us to love God. She wants us to, to go to confession. Because she reminds us it's through confession that the veil is unveiled. Mm -hmm. You know, we sin, we dead ourselves. And then the light of God comes and it blocks. The light of God wants to come in, but we have put ourselves in the net and we are trapped. Mm -hmm. So we go to confession and we, then we can breathe again. Uh, yeah. 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 Then the light of God can come to us. She wants us just to do confession even in your heart daily, the act of contrition many times throughout the day. Yeah, she always said that. But the rosary for sure, our daily rosary, because then she can guide us. Yeah. If you can give a message to young people today, in the United States especially, what would it be? I would tell them, make God your hero. Mm -hmm. Make God your superstar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is so much safe. It's mm -hmm. safer, you mm -hmm. know, that's much safer. <laughs> it's safer. Make Jesus your superstar. Mm -hmm. You know, we are mm -hmm. so attracted to all the stars of the Hollywood. Then, then we fall. We give our hearts to this. Mm -hmm. A long time ago, when I was a child, we used to fight with my brothers. I, one time I loved one, one uh, football uh, team. Mm -hmm. So I loved it. And then I went to see where they were playing, and they lost. <laughs> and I was sick for two days. Oh. <laughs> and after, with all this sickness of feeling so bad, I'm like, I am losing all these tears over something that will not even take me to heaven. <laughs> You know, I just want to be detached a little bit. Love them from a distance, but love God, because these tears could have done something much better. <laughs> and after that, I could not be attached to any game, any, any boy like that, just to be a star. So make Jesus your superstar. Like find him, like be, let him be your hero. You know, and when you read the Bible, just say, like, yeah, he's my, my hero, he's my superstar. <laughs> and then find out what does he want. You could be like him, you know, yeah. do something like that. Read the Bible, truly knowing that he's there. It's not for all the people. It's, it, this is for today. Mm -hmm. You speak to Jesus, I want to have good grades in school. He gives it to you. Mm -hmm. You speak to a lady, let her be your mother, let her be your, your lady star, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. You ask her, help me to find a nice girlfriend. She will find you. <laughs> she will help you. Or a good boyfriend. She will help you. So you find, tell her to, you want to dress nice, you want her to help you to lose weight, she will help you <laughs> in a much safer way, mm -hmm. more than being attached to a person that who can never hear you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. but Jesus, let him be your superstar. Mm -hmm. And then when we do something wrong, they guide us so kindly. Yeah. But especially, 
honor God, his commandment, no matter who changes. Mm -hmm. Young people, I will tell them, and I continue to tell them whatever I speak, honor his commandment. Yeah. God never changed. He's always the same, always. Yeah. And then you will see the fruits. You will be the people you want to be in the world, the jobs you want to have when you grow up, how you want to be so much safer mm -hmm. through God. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And what is your dream and hope for the remaining years that God gives you to live on earth here? My hope is that my life will continue to be used to bring people to God okay. and to bring God to people mm -hmm. as I read in your home. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope because when you see life from what I have seen, life is so short. Mm -hmm. And then you just kind of, what? I don't want to misuse it. And then tomorrow I fade and go. Mm -hmm. And then what? You go to face the consequences of what you have done mm -hmm. when it is, you know, you could have done it for good. Yeah. And people who do good on earth, you really live happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you live, you start your paradise here. Mm -hmm. Our lady used to tell us, and I really, this is also a message for the youth especially. She used to tell us, look at a rose flower, mm -hmm. any flower actually. And she said, look how beautiful that is, as the young is. Mm -hmm. Look how quickly it fades. Look back next week, next mm -hmm. two days without water. Look how quickly it dies, a new flower comes in. And that's how quickly our life goes by in the eyes of God. And she's like, as long as it's still beautiful, do good. Because the good you do, the loving thing you do, the protection you protect, the ones who are weak, is what is going to make your flower last forever now in heaven. Mm. Yeah, so she gave so many beautiful images and comparison. And then at the time she said, look at the flower, the plastic flower. She said, this flower never dies, like a bee, like that flower. Mm. That is always like this, like mm. a good. Mm. So in a way she taught us many different ways how to look, our, how to look at our, our lives. So I hope I am an instrument to God I pray and I go to confession hmm. and to see, I mean, sometimes you go like, am I even worthy to even be used? But we are all worthy, mm -hmm. no one is less. Mm -hmm. And then when I see the work done, standing in front of these people, I'm like, okay, I guess God is really listening. <laughs> and then you, I see emails and mails and calls, people telling me, I'm talking to my mom after 20 years because mm -hmm. I heard your story. And then you see that as a fruit coming out of that. But I hope to continue to write, to inspire people. I mean, he gave me this gift of expressing myself through books. Yeah. So it's everything from him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he makes me stand. But as long as he wants me and he loves to use me, I am ready. <laughs> well, finally, yeah. what, what can we mm -hmm. um, do to support this dream of bringing, helping you bring God to people and people mm -hmm. to God and to help Mary's triumph of her heart throughout the world? You know, but helping me is really helping Our Lady. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm trying to do that to accomplish that, okay. and helping Our Lady is helping her to bring people to Jesus. Okay. So and to love, to to really let love conquer. We went through this tragedy in Rwanda because people failed to love. Okay. And this was not a natural disaster. It was people lacking of love and hurting other people. So if only, only in life, all of us, at least we can say the rosary and beg Our Lady, help me to be a loving person. Mm -hmm. Help me to love Jesus. You will be helping my mission. <laughs> and if people especially say the seven sorrows rosary, I remember when she used to talk to us through the vision, where she's like, my children, help me. It's you I have. Help me to spread the seven sorrows rosary. Mm -hmm. I will help you if you decide to help me. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, I will reward you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, just by talking to us, you feel rewarded. Because uh -huh. <laughs> the joy in your body, just to know that, I'm helping her. So anytime I share the seven sorrows rosary, I mean, if I get everything wrong in my life, that one, at least I know <laughs> I'm doing something right. Because she used to say, help me, I will reward you. I will reward you, help me to spread the rosary. You are all my messengers, not one less, everybody. So if, if anyone can share the seven sorrows, only because I know she asked for it, please, that will be helping my mission. Yeah, Amen. by loving one another, to see love among people, to see people who live without jealousy, to support the kids who are being bullied and the poor of the poorest. It just, there's something it gives me in my heart, like, you see, love conquers. 
I don't know why, but there's something in my heart I want to see that love conquers. It wasn't all the genocide. It is not all wars. Mm. Love can conquer. Mm. People don't have to hate each other. Mm. So when I see it, I'm like, yeah, you see, it's possible. And I'm hoping to continue to see that. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Immaculate with complete joy. And mm. I'm so grateful you were able to join us today here at Catholic Peekskill. We hope and pray that this mission will be completed of spreading God's love, of bringing others to God and God to others through the intercession of Our Lady's Sorrowful Immaculate Heart, through the Rosary, the Seven Sorrows. And we support you and pray for your mission. May Please continue. One day we hope to get over to Cabejo to see the Divine Mercy Shrine. Oh, yes. And in the meantime, thank you so much for being with us. Thank and may God bless you. Thank you so thank much, Father. Thank, thank you for what you do. Oh. We need priests. Our Lady told us so many times, without them, I can't do nothing. So she loves you very much. And she will say, my sons, my sons. So I am so grateful for you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Have a good night.